Our story begins in the land of Egypt, where Joseph, once a prisoner, is now the Pharaoh's advisor. So, brother, how are things back in Israel? Oi, terrible. Our gardens and crops are dying. There is no rain this year. That is why we had to come down to Egypt. Well, don't worry. Life in Egypt is fantastic. Smart TVs in every home, Teslas in every driveway, unlimited amounts of toilet paper. This is the most powerful nation on the planet. Did you have rain this year? Are the gardens and crops doing well? We don't have to worry about that. I've stored away tons of food in giant warehouses. The Pharaoh will be able to feed our people for three years at least, even if there is no rain. What does the Pharaoh think of us Hebrews? He loves me. He welcomes the Hebrews into his land. Bring the entire family. We'll make a great life here. So the Hebrews all moved to Egypt and had many children and lived a successful life. But after many years, after Joseph and his brothers had died, a new pharaoh came into power. Advisor, bring me the latest census report. I want to know all the people who I rule over. Yes, your royal highness, I have the numbers here. Let's see. Nubians, Midians. Yes, very good. Are there really that many Hebrews? Oh, yes, Your Highness. They are growing in number. They're very strong workers. Do you think that might be a danger? Perhaps they will challenge my rule, make demands. You know, how these workers are always complaining about the size of the rocks and the new pyramids. I am worried that they will use their strength in numbers and rise up against me. Yes, yes, you are right. We must do something to break their spirits. First, let us begin with something small. We'll get them to make more bricks each day. If that doesn't work, we'll eliminate the 15 break, minute breaks. If that doesn't break them, then we'll turn to harsher measures. The Hebrew workers struggle to keep up with Pharaoh's demands. My hands are killing me and my back, oi, I can't take this pace. We can make a thousand bricks a day, but 2,000? No team can work that hard. We'll fall over. Back to work, the boss is coming. Efficiency, people. We still have 900 more bricks to make before sundown. Come on, let's work harder. We're working as fast as we can, boss. Listen, smart Alec. I got a lot of pressure on my shoulders. If Pharaoh doesn't get his bricks, I'm out of a job. I have a family to feed too, you know. So get down in the pit and start working. We haven't had a break all day. And you're not going to get one. Work! You know what, boss? You become a real pain in the backside. What did you just say? You heard me. Now get back to work before I get really angry. Meanwhile... A Jewish slave named Yocheved placed her baby in a basket and floated him down the Nile to save him from being killed. Her daughter Miriam hid in the bushes and watched him to make sure he would stay safe. Wow, Moses is floating to the palace. This is great. Oh, one day when he learns who he is, he'll be so glad that I'm his big sister. Pharaoh's daughter sees the baby floating in a basket down the Nile, and she picks him up, takes him in, and names him Moses, adopts him as her own. He was raised with the finest things that Egypt had to offer. Here, sweetheart, eat your honey cakes before your flute lesson. I'm so excited about the party this evening. My new dress for the party tonight is so cool. Yours is too. I hope that the pyramid is finished. Your grandfather ha has the workers working double time just to get the, the place finished before the great assembly. I heard that the Hebrews were complaining. Complaining? Don't worry about that. We take care of all the needs of our workers. They are fed, 
given homes and we give them new pairs of shoes every year. We are very generous. The only problem is that there are simply too many Hebrews. For that reason, we are cutting down their number. I know that it's sad that we have to kill their baby boys, but we are really doing it for their own good. I know so little about the world. Someday, I'd like to go out of the palace and see how they live. They are not clean like us, dear, especially the Hebrews. They throw garbage, garbage on the streets, and the smell is truly horrible. One day, Moses decided to sneak out of the palace and discover the plight of the Hebrews. I can't work today. I'm sick, and I hurt my arm yesterday lifting stones. I don't want to hear excuses. This pyramid has got to be finished by Thursday. Today is Wednesday, so get moving! Give him a break, boss! Shut up! Don't, don't, don't get involved. I'm tired of this, boss. My cousin there is hurt. He can't work today, and he's not working. So go tell Pharaoh that he'll have to hire some more workers or this isn't getting done. Shut up! <clears throat> Stop it! I'm going to hurt you bad, you whiny Hebrew. Stop. Stop. One of the Pharaoh's princes is coming. What is happening? I'm going to give this man the beating he deserves. Watch this! No! <clears throat> oh, no. Oh, no. What did you do to the boss? We'll be blamed for this. We'll be punished. What have I done? What have I done? Moses ran far away into the wilderness where he was discovered and taken in by a man named Yitro. Now, he marries one of Yitro's daughters. Her name was Sephora. And one day, as Moses was taking care of the sheep, he stumbled across a burning bush. Moses, Moses. Who is that? What's going on? What's happening? It is me, the God of your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You must have the wrong number. This is no time for jokes, Moses. You must go back to Egypt and stand up to Pharaoh. Then you will lead the people back to their homeland. How will I do that? You know, the people don't know me. I have no power now that I am i have run away. I will be with you. Go to your sister Miriam and brother Aaron and stand up to Pharaoh. Moses decided to return to Egypt with his wife and son. Moses, you're back. I'm so happy to see you. We're going to help you save our people. Hello, brother. You've got to go speak to Pharaoh. I'm not so good at this public speaking thing. I've waited a long time for this. I'm ready. Let's do this thing. Moses and Aaron approach Pharaoh. What do you want? Our people need a three-day vacation so that we can go outside of the city to pray to God in our own way. Why can't you wait for the festival of pyramids? Then your people will have a chance to celebrate with everyone. We do not wish to pray to your gods. We have one God who is mightier than all your gods. You must be joking. The gods have made Egypt a great nation. What has your God done for you? You'll see what our God can do, and then you'll give in to our demands. Don't count on it, Hebrew. Pharaoh was a stubborn man. Even after the plagues of the blood and the frogs and the hail and the locusts and the cattle disease and the darkness, he wouldn't let the Hebrews go. I was fishing for the Pharaoh and all of a sudden the river turned red. It wasn't until disease struck and killed Pharaoh's firstborn that he finally changed his mind. Don't you understand what is happening? No, your highness, I don't know why our gods are not protecting us. 
everything we did to the Hebrews is now happening to us. Maybe their God is powerful. Be gone. Tell the police that are surrounding their neighborhood to let them go. That night, Moses spoke to the people. Put on your sandals. We will not have time to bake your bread for tomorrow. Tonight, we will leave Egypt and set out for a new land. Women, grab your timbrels and let us dance as we seek our freedom. Yay! Pharaoh once more changed his mind, and he chased after the Jews. Hey, Moses, head towards the Red Sea, dude. I got this. God parted the Red Sea, and the Jews were able to cross to safety. Wow, that was amazing. Our children and our children's children will remember this night. They will tell the story of how we stood up to Pharaoh and how God helped us to be free. And thus ends our little play. Thanks for watching.